Inside of 50 days from the opening ceremony at the Olympics tonight, we begin to find out who will represent the U.S. in gymnastics in Tokyo. Sam McCulloch plans on being there, already a celebrated six-time U.S. all-around champ. He starts his run at a seventh title right here. And Yule Moldauer, the former Oklahoma Sooner star who won the all-around title in 2017, the national championships kick off tonight in Texas. NBC Sports welcomes you to the 2021 U.S. Gymnastics Championships from Fort Worth. Glad to have you along. Always a high-level prestigious event, but even more so when it is the run-up, the lead-up to the Olympics as these championships are Terry Gannon along with the Olympic gold medalist Nasty Lukin and Tim Daggett. And guys, we talk all the time about the pressure of the Olympics, but what's it like? How about the pressure of trying to make the Olympic team, Tim? Well, actually, a lot of people say that it's worse than competing in the <laughs> Olympic Games. And I would say that until you get to the Olympics and a medal is on the line, then you know what's really bad. But what also is on the line tonight is a national championship. And making the national team is also the first step to just getting to the Olympic trials as well. A couple of nights of competition for the men. We'll see the women as well over the course of this week and the weekend. Sam McCulloch looking for number seven. And how about this? Not only a six-time U.S. all-around champ, just like Simone Biles, but look at the years. They coincide the same years at the national championship. Sam also a two-time Olympian. When he arrived at the building tonight, Andrea Joyce caught up with him. Sam, we know you're retiring at the end of the season. What are your emotions tonight as you get set for your very last U.S. Nationals? Uh, it's mixed. Right now, there's a lot of nerves. Um, you know, I'm kind of embracing these emotions right now, accepting them, listening to them. Uh, what are they telling me? You know, I've still got this hindrance of trying to have expectations, but had a good conversation with one of my teammates, you know, and he was just like, you know, let's say things don't go well tonight. Are you still going to feel less of a person? I was like, you know, I really needed that right now. So. You know, I will still be happy if anything there's going to be, uh, you know, it's greener on the other side type of mentality if that's the case. But also, you know, something that I'm trying to go forward through this competition is just having that mindfulness. And, you know, when I salute my hand, just say, you know, you've done a lot, you know, just go give it your all. And that's all you can ask for. So obviously the pandemic has been tough on everyone, but at age 28, what's the special challenge for you over these next several weeks trying for that third Olympic team? Uh, I'd say the biggest challenges are just staying out of my head, uh, trying to mitigate my pressures, trying to make sure that you know I'm staying in the moment. I'm not building this up into something that I'm expecting glorious changes in my life or results, but just being happy that I have this opportunity because so many gymnasts have had to retire early because, you know, like everyone else has been dealing with, coming back after a long break in your training from the pandemic, you know, your body takes so much more of a toll. And the fact that I have a chance where others don't, in a way I'm doing this for everyone else that doesn't have the opportunity. And I'm just gonna find the gratitude in that. All right, Sam, thanks so much. Good luck this week. Thank you very much. Andrea, thanks. I'm not sure I would talk to my friends before a competition if they're going to say that to me, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's a different mindset, certainly, for Sam McCulloch. He actually says that being a seven-time national champion is not a goal for him. I know. We'll talk more about that as we go tonight and a couple days of competition. To take you over to the floor, we're going to start there. Yul Moldauer, the 24-year-old who was born in Seoul, South Korea, former star at the University of of Oklahoma, the 2017 U.S. All-Around and Floor Champ. One of those names certainly you think of when you think about that selection in a couple of weeks at the trials and eventually Tokyo. Absolutely, he is definitely in the mix, without a doubt, along with Sam McCulloch. You got a couple other guys that are really top shot guys, Shane Wiskus and Brody Malone as well. Here we go. And the, the types of landings that we just saw, even on those first two tunnel passes, are really what sets the third one there, sets him apart from the rest of the field. The landings, the execution, 
He oftentimes sticks that second and third pass. I've never in a competition seen him stick that opening tumbling run, which is a laid out somersault with two and a half twists called a Randy. Well, this is, this is a gigantic start for Yul Moldauer. Little bit of a hop and chest down a little bit too much on that. Do a triple twist at the end. Very hard to stick. Small little hop, but wow, an excellent, excellent first routine from Yule Moldauer. Competed at the Winter Cup. You know, you think about the guys, as opposed to the women who we'll see tomorrow night, they're lightly um, experienced this season, lately in terms of competition. Look at that, just money. Absolutely spots that ground, beat down and does not move. So we'll get the number for Yul Moldauer on floor in just a moment. This pump as he left the floor, so happy with that. Thumbs up at work too. Over to the veteran, Eddie Penev, the 30-year-old, born in Bulgaria from Penfield, New York, and the 2017 U.S. champ on vault. And he is a vaulting floor exercise specialist. He's hoping to earn a spot that way to the Olympic Games. Really tricky vault right here. And pretty good, little bit of bent knees right towards the end on that and a bounding step forward. Yeah, which when sometimes these athletes bend their knees, it's, it's almost as if they're anticipating not having enough rotation, but as we saw in that landing, definitely had enough and too much almost. Just think about these numbers. The scores won't carry over to the Olympic trials, but this certainly a big week in terms of that next step along the road to the Olympics. Yeah, every competition in the Olympic year is part of the Olympic trials, in my opinion. And he's going to do two vaults, and the reason he's doing that is if he does get that spot as an individual for Team USA, he he's going to be competing on vaulting, and to win a medal, make finals, you have to do two different vaults, from two complete different families. The vault he's gonna do now is the vault that Simone Biles used to start out with. It's called the Yurchenko two and a half. Wow, huge block off of the table. Was really going for that stick. And it, it was excellent, but, but he can be better on uh, both of them. All right, how about the number now for Moldauer, the difficulty, the execution, and then the total 14.5. Yeah, that's Good. a little lower execution-wise than Put I thought, down, but he, you see that green arrow there. Let's go, Tay! Green is for excellent. That's world-class if you're in that category. Yellow safe and red was a bit below average on a routine. Based on the major international meets and, and what the top numbers are around the globe. And the U.S., you, you talk about that extra spot, 14 members, but still trying to earn that extra spot. Athletes at the Pan Am Championships this week, as a matter of fact, trying to do that for the U.S. Robert Neff, 25-year-old, who's now in Colorado Springs training, ready to go on vault. Former Stanford gymnast, very powerful team. We'll see a bunch of athletes from Stanford tonight. Competed at the Pan American Games in 2019 and was second on floor exercise and pommel horse seventh all around there. They've got five athletes, gymnasts currently at the Pan American Championships and, and this week, this weekend, trying to get somebody in the top two of the all around to earn a spot for the U.S. Well, and he just pulled that last half turn around right at the end there. Pretty good job, pretty clean vault. Doesn't have as much block off the table as we'll see from some of the other gymnasts tonight. Even as we just saw from Eddie. So you see he doesn't, as you, as you mentioned, Tim, doesn't get up in the air, and that is why he's not quite able to finish that turn it's so close to the ground. In gymnastics, a line is always in. So if you land over the line, then you incur deductions. He is on the line with his right foot right there, but not over, so 
He's safe for there. Good to have fans back too at, at these championships and someone limited the tickets, but uh, awfully nice compared to what we've been through with so many sporting events over the past year and a half. The numbers 5.2, even nine. So in yellow there, mid-range 14.2. Yeah, not a bad score, but certainly not going to be world-class inter international medal. So over to Matt Wenske, the 23-year-old from Houston. Just finished a collegiate career at the University of Oklahoma and a team silver at the 2021 NCAA championships. Really nice young man. Has had a whole bunch of different setbacks in his career, injury-wise. As a sophomore at OU, he tore his lat completely off the bone. And I had never heard of that. And Don't have to be that graphic. <laughs> yeah. All the skills that can finish in a handstand must, or you incur deductions. I was a little bit shy, at least a tenth, possibly even three tenths off on that. Very nice one and a half turn. Clean exercise so far. Not the big high flying release elements, but a good job. Solid start for Matt. Wenske, who's an only child, originally tried gymnastics all the way back in daycare and recently graduated with a degree in psychology in May. Another look. He's been around for a long, long time. Won a number of junior national championships in the all around. Always had a very bright future, but like I said, unfortunately, those injuries, and they were big ones that he had to deal with. Terry, you mentioned being able to have an audience back in, in, in the arena here at this competition, but just having a competition in itself, so many of these athletes haven't competed in such a long time. Getting back in the mental game is going to be so important, especially for an athlete like Sam. This man right here, Sam McCoolix, to so the first event here, these championships for him, the six-time all-around champ who has not competed since March of 2020 at the American Cup. It's unbelievable. That is a that is eternity in a gymnast's life. But if there's an event that is great to start on to get yourself rolling for someone like Sam and the vault that he does, it's right here. Same vault we saw from Neff a little bit earlier. I think we'll see a little bit more boom in the air. And it was good. Not not the best vault I've seen him do. Little, once again, a little bit of knees, right, Nastia, in the air? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it just kind of seemed he was playing it maybe a little bit safe. As you mentioned, we've seen him in training and even so many other times in competition, but doesn't quite get the repulsion from his shoulders where the angle was a little bit closed, it looked like, off of the table. You know, he has a very serious injury on his elbow. He has a bone chip that's kind of floating around, and he says that vault is really tough on it. It can lock up, right? Absolutely, and he says when it does lock, it's one to three weeks that he really can't do anything using that arm, and that that's a long time. There's that mid-range number, that safe number is 14.2, but mentally, Nastia, what, what's that do to you as an athlete, knowing that it could happen? Well, that's the one thing that you want to teach your athletes is to obviously never think about or worry about getting injured, but when you do have an injury like that, of course, you, you want to sometimes play it a little bit safe, perhaps doing not as many vaults or not as many skills that could affect it or that have, have, have affected that elbow. Shane Wiskus, the 22-year-old, another name in, in the mix? Absolutely, w without question. And he's gonna show us the same vault that Sam did. Let's see if he can get a little better block. Mm. Not great right there. That step over the line and showing lack of control on the landing. That's surprising for me. He typically does that much better. Graduated from the University of Minnesota this spring. Wenske's numbers, so not what he wanted. 13.25 for the effort on high bar. 
High bar, one of the toughest scoring events in men's gymnastics. It is just brutal. They are so critical on all of the handstands, and Allen's got a bunch of them as well. See the all around that year for Alan Bauer, the 26 year old from Arizona. Family affair, gymnastics, everybody in the family involved in this sport. Start at the University of Nebraska. In the Oklahoma. I can read. <laughs> <laughs> Allen has been dealing with a recent injury. Big release coming up right here. At the bar. Been having problems with his shoulder. Thinks it might be a labrum issue. But he's about as tough of an athlete as you can be. He is not the guy that is going to just wow you like crazy, but every event he will just chip away. A little bit of leg separation on that though. And he chips away and waits for others in the top of the field to have some problems. Good set. What is it, his mom at Nebraska, right? That's wrong. Yes, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm talking about the family, yeah, exactly. But he has been so close, so many times, to being on major world championship teams. See, this is that year. Shane Wiskus, 13.5. Yeah, that is, that's a pretty brutal score for him. You see the penalty there? That's for stepping over the line. And Brody Malone, a moment ago, 21-year-old from Somerville, Georgia, on rings. Just absolutely love this guy's gymnastics. Every event has got just tremendous qualities. Very strong, physically great position right there. All of the strength parts have to be held for a minimum of two seconds and if you're doing it the right way, beautiful position right there, that's called a plange. If you're doing it the right way, you're trying to be on the safe side of two seconds. So you're trying to hold it a little bit longer. You, as coaches acro across the country are telling their athletes, always try to count to three. I would say his holds were very, very good. Very patient, was a little under on that, but didn't show it at all. Just a small little hop, double twisting, double somersault, and a very solid routine for Brody Malone. Great start. Could be a big week for him, right? Oh, it could be a very, very big week for him. He's in contention. If he does what he is capable of doing, he could be at the very top of the podium. He's competing rodeo with his brother, as a matter of fact. They hold a rodeo right next to this arena. <laughs> it's a brand new arena, 2019. This one of the first major events that they're holding here in Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. Yeah, he's an outdoorsman, that's for sure. He got his first deer when he was 15 years old, he told me. Is that right? Yeah. Power 13.25, that number on high bar. And you see that 7.95, so over two points deduction execution, which you know, that's just the way high bar is nowadays. It is absolutely brutal, the judging. U.S. All-Around Browns medalist from 2019. That's the last championships that were held. Akash Modi, the 26-year-old, just about ready to go. Man, who was an alternate for the Rio games in 2016. He said, nobody expected me to be there in 2016, and I overperformed, and I plan on doing the same thing here. Said during the pandemic, he was able to get a lot stronger. And we talk about that with the women as well, but having that extra year for, for so many athletes, it has affected them in positive ways, some in negative ways. Some are at their absolute prime. 
last year, getting ready for the national yeah. championship and Olympic trials. And well, for the older men, it's you know it, it's very very challenging. Their bodies are a little bit beat up, but he's done a good job. He actually thinks he's better now than he would have been last year. Very strong start. Same dismount we saw from Brody. Little hop. It's kind of plan out your whole Olympic cycle, don't you? If you're a certain level athlete, and then that's put back an entire year. Oh, the plan goes back far beyond just 12 months. <laughs> it's years and years of preparation leading up to trying to make this Olympic team. But now, now in those final couple of months, as I said, inside of 15 days until that opening ceremony at the Olympics. Get the number from Modi and continue on from Fort Worth in a moment. The 2021 U.S. Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by Prevagen, the number one pharmacist recommended memory support brand by guaranteed rate if you believe it you can do it guaranteed rate believe you will and by home light selling starts at homelight.com evergrown city of fort worth here 30 miles or so from dallas the metroplex area hosting the u.s championships for the first time so it could be, as we said, a big week for Brody Malone after the first rotation on top. Yul Moldauer, Wang, uh, the Bailey, Sam McCulloch sharing fifth place as we continue from Fort Worth. Man sharing fifth with Sam McCulloch after the opening rotation, Robert Neff. 25-year-old, star at Stanford, ready to go. You know, we mentioned it, but the lack of competition for the last year or so, it's one thing to train. Even if your training wasn't really interrupted, it's different once the lights are on. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we talk about this all the time. Going into training, we, as, as athletes and as coaches, you want to create that environment and, and create pressure for them, whatever that environment is, but you really fully can't replicate that until you are right here on a podium, national team spots on the line, yep. Olympic trial spots. And if you were at the USOPTC, then your training was interrupted a lot. Closed down, reopened again, and then closed again. Very frustrating for a lot of athletes, not, not just there, but the Stanford athletes also dealt with a lot of training issues. Not to mention, in, in a normal year, Coming into the competition, as you mentioned, Terry, you're not really able to also replicate being on a podium. So as you see him coming off of the steps here, all the equipment feels a little bit more different. And you don't get that at your gym, even if it is open. A lot of improvising going on during the pandemic, too. Backyard pommel whores and whatnot. <laughs> Absolutely. It's really hard to stay in shape as a gymnast if you don't have gymnastics equipment. And, you know, they were valiant, and they really gave it their all, most of these guys. But I tell you, it, it, it was a long break for them where they weren't touching actual gymnastics equipment. And it's one thing to stay in shape. It's another to be a finely tuned athlete at this level, you know, in what you do. And wait for the number here. And off to a good start initially tonight. We'll see what the judges think in a moment. And, and to add the fact that now, I mean, it's really accelerated. I mean, you've got the championships this week. You've got the trials coming up in just a few weeks to decide who goes to Tokyo. And to put that into perspective a little bit, you know, as an elite athlete, at least on the women's side, I guess I can't speak for the men, but you really don't take more than just a weekend, a few days, maybe when it's not competition season off. And 
they have been taking weeks or months at times during all of this. How long did you Olympic go year? <laughs> in days off in a given year when you were at your peak, when you were competing? Uh, I, I mean, I trained Christmas Eve, Christmas yes. Day, Christmas... You, you, know, did, you did never take three days off. I never took never. three days off. Never. The most possibly two if it was a travel day coming yes. back from a competition and maybe one day if there wasn't a competition coming up in a few weeks after. For me, if Christmas fell on a Saturday, then I, I had two days off. All right, so we wait as they continue to add up the numbers and go over to Brody Malone, who, who again, uh, first after the opening rotation, spent the pandemic mostly in Georgia and Tennessee as he had to leave the Stanford campus and you know, obviously had to improvise, eventually made his way down to Texas from September through the winter. But maybe one of those names gymnastics fans know, but now on the verge of really knowing. We've seen this vault a bunch of times, but he can explode. Oh. Wow. oh! Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> it drew a yikes. Holy mackerel. Gymnastics 101, baby. Fly high and stick the landing. We have not heard that in a very long time. Didn't take long tonight, though. Yeah, you know, I was watching him in warm-ups, and he was really keying in on this landing. Great bounce off that table. And you see him spot the floor over his shoulder, and kerpow! Hits the ground, does not move. That was spectacular. The excitement he, is back. He's going to get them Tim all out early yeah, because yeah, it's I, pent exactly. up, right? <laughs> Enthusiasm. Oh, God, that was, that was just phenomenal. He has just the smallest leg separation from the board to the table. But look at that score. 9-5 execution. Wow making an impression right away in the number for Robert Neff. So 5.4, 8.5 for the execution, 13.9 for his effort on parallel bars. Brody, what a start. Back inside Dickey's Arena here in Fort Worth and the U.S. Championships continue. Terry Gannon, Nasty Lucan, Tim Daggett and Andrea Joyce out to floor. Alan Bauer just about ready to go. Recently finished fifth in the all-around at the Winter Cup. You know, talking about these athletes who have had adversity and couldn't train in the places where they were supposed to. He was out three and a half months from training at OU. Eventually got a volunteer assistant coaching position there to be able to train but initially when when they did delay the Olympics he said I, I cannot do this for another year and I think that was the reaction of a lot of gymnasts a lot on both sides both the men and the women and, and especially you know the veterans that have been through the entire process already once and they know what's to come and now having to do an entire mm. year of more training more repetition more possible upgrades let alone just get those routines back. After taking three months off, yes, as we just talked about, taking a few days off is a lot. Yeah, you know, I mean, they have their life and they're, they're planning. I mean, he was gonna get married and pushed back till December 2021. Very nice start, double somersault forward. In the pike position, double-double here, two flips, two twists. Fight there. Gonna lose a tenth. Believe it or not, you lose a tenth when you swing your arms like that. My opinion, you. It's an outrage. Yes, my opinion, you land, your feet don't move. There should be nothing taken off, but I guess I'm not in charge, so. <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> Nice handstand. We're going to Tokyo this summer. That's actually called a Japanese handstand. And Alan would love nothing more than to be part of that team. As I said earlier, he has been so close so many times. Not gotten the call. Triple twist. Little bit under rotated on that turn. And the hop forward. A solid routine for him, though. 
I would imagine you, you'd have to start to doubt yourself at some point, too, getting close and not quite, especially in these weeks leading up is when it takes place. Yeah, it sure does. It all comes down to this. You know, you were saying earlier, Terry, you, you know, you, you're planning, you know, for a year for this, but really, most of these athletes have been planning for this moment for 12, 14 years of their lives, literally. And it's, it's, that's been the goal. That's where they're going. And it's certainly, at the very least, a four-year cycle of a plan. As we go to Sam McCulloch now in a share of fifth after the opening rotation. Not a great start for Sam, but this potentially can be phenomenal. One of the best P-bar workers in the world has made world championship finals on this event so close to a medal. Oh. Wow, that was a, a very good save. Didn't think he was gonna be able to hold on to that. Nice combination right here. Oh boy. Oh geez. He's making sure that physically he's okay. And that's a strategy right there. You have 30 seconds once you get up from the fall. So, and that is a fairly recent rule change. It used to be as soon as you hit, the clock started. But now, so watch this big release and goes, wow, and that, there's a lot of things that could hurt. My guess is, you know, that elbow could have been affected and your lower back, because he kind of torques it forward. Don't want to speculate, but he's up and going again. So we'll see. Going to repeat it, looks like. This is a big release right here. It's got to get a lot of rotation. And that is a shame because he is absolutely world class on this event. Big dismount, double front with a half turn. And gorgeous. However, that big however. Yeah, no, it, it's a very big one because, you know, you kind of focus on the biggest error and you saw the fall, but in the beginning, very tricky skill for Sam, really for a long, long time. This is called a peach with a half and his oh, legs yeah. come apart and he's way off to the side. You see him hold on to that. That was an epic fight right there. And uh, let's look and see if he fumbles his grip at all. And look at, yeah, he does not, he doesn't get his hands completely around the bar right initially, and there's just no time to make that adjustment. You come off the apparatus, it's a full point off. So let's look in once again at those hands. You can see right away the, the right hand, it just is not in position and no way you can hold on if, you're, if your hand isn't completely around the bar. And, and that's an example. A lot of gymnasts do that major release skill. Just a handful in the world do that skill out of that major release. And that's what is so tricky. You're flying high in the air and then you need to have a perfect grip. He takes the risk on that, which is, and it's really cool, but it didn't pay off today. No, and you can hear it in the moment when it happened, you could hear in the building too, and a lot of it from gymnasts watching as well, that, that reaction that they were shocked. Well, absolutely a shock. And, and then, you know, a little bit of fear because of course, yeah. as the six time national champion going into Olympic trials and hopefully another Olympic games, you, you kind of want to count on, on your veterans. 14.05 for Bauer on floor. Take you over to Shane Wiskus now. 2021 NCAA rings parallel bars champ. Having watched that. Yeah, and he didn't have a great start at all. No. Remember, he uh, took that bounding step to the side and, and didn't have as good of a vault. You know, no real power that we typically see from Shane, but he is also really tremendous on parallel bars. See if he can get his nerves in check. Same exact start that we saw from 
Sam. Great lines. Oh, fumbled mm. his hand a little bit. Lose probably just a tenth of a point for that. See, and that is the different way that most gymnasts do it. Sam goes into what's called a, a, a giant type swing. Shane doesn't do that, is able to, you know, if he's a little bit off, it's not a disaster. This is a don't count me out routine right here from Shane Wiskus. NCAA champ on parallel bars. Moved to Colorado but was still competing with the University of Minnesota, second in the all around. And then effort on parallel bars for Shane Wiskus here in the second rotation. So we'll get the number for him in a moment. Meanwhile, Yul Moldauer, his effort on pommel horse took place a short time ago. Let's go back and check this out. Did not go as planned. No, and you know what? This is an example of maybe trying to do too much, to be frank. When he was a young kid, he was a superstar, and he was capable of doing so many difficult skills, but this routine is just jam-packed. He went to Oklahoma, co head coach Mark Williams kind of said, you know, we got to calm down. We got to make sure that you can get through all your routines every time. Really, really tough stuff. And it's exhausting when you're doing all this work in flair. And he just looks to me out of gas right there. And that's exactly what happened off the horse. That's a full point off and not what he was looking for. Very disappointing, 13.05 for you. We're back home to Colorado, said it really gave him fewer distractions, able to focus on training, but didn't go the way he planned there. And the number for Shane Wiskus, medium range there in the yellow, 14.55. So Yul Moldauer and Sam McCulloch, the two, two of the biggest names here, not exactly the start that they had envisioned here at the National Championships in Texas. Among the things you can watch this summer, of course, Simone Biles trying to become the first woman to win back-to-back -back Olympic all-around titles in over 50 years. The Olympics begin July 23rd, live from Tokyo on NBC. Part of that road is right here in Fort Worth for the top gymnasts from the U.S. The men in action tonight, Brody Malone, just a great start. Look down in seventh, Sam McCulloch and Yul Moldauer right now in ninth place after two rotations. So looking for a comeback here. Four more to go onto the third rotation when we come back to Fort Worth. Bring you back to Fort Worth for the U.S. Championships taking place. The men tonight will see Simone Biles and the women in action tomorrow night. Terry Gannon, Nasty Luke, and Tim Daggett with you, along with Andrea Joyce. Mike Moran, the 21-year-old from Morristown, New Jersey, getting set. Our first look at him tonight. Just finished his junior year at the University of Minnesota. And he will not have a senior year. Unfortunately, yeah. In gymnastics, and, uh, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking. The program at the University of Minnesota has been around for 118 years. They've had Olympians, national team members, stars, John Roethlisberger, one of the most decorated U.S. gymnasts of all time, attended there. You know, they're, they're very upset. They're still fighting. They're vocal. They have a little bit of a voice left, and they're still just somehow trying to get the word out there that this isn't right. Too much history, and and they should be they should be taken back. They should be reinstated. Actually, we've seen Shane Wiskus already. He's you know a former go Golden Gopher. When Stanford reinstated the programs that they had dropped, he took a screenshot of it and texted that to the University of Minnesota AD. 
No response. Integral part, obviously, of gymnastics. And for the men, it's, it's a little different than for the women because you, you look ahead maybe to a collegiate career after a career at this level. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's pretty much in reverse. You know, they're, they're making the Olympic team with some of their college coaches right next to their side, whereas for the women, it, it is possible. But for the most part, you know, they finish their elite career and then they move on to college. There have been, of course, athletes that have come back and, and whether they go back to their club coaches or they come out here with their collegiate coaches. But but can you imagine, Nastia, this is, he's in his junior year and he's about to have his senior year doing the sport that he's loved since he's a little kid and he's got to make the decision. So what do I do? Do I stay at the University of Minnesota and, and the club team that is hopefully going to work? Who do I leave? He doesn't want to leave. He's a gopher. Yep. Of course. Taken away. All right, here he goes. Nice swing elements right here. Those double flipping elements have a lot of value. Called a back giant to a handstand. A little bit of fight. Full twisting double. Oh, you had that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I told him that uh, I coached a guy forever. Michael Moran, exact same spelling, exact same name. He goes, I know, because I Google myself. <laughs> of course. And he always shows up. It's what you do these days. Yes, it is. Full twisting double. You see the bent elbows right there. Get some deductions for that, but. Full twisting double somersault. And look, he just needed to kind of lift his chest up a little bit sooner. But was really going for that stick on the landing and, and got a few too many tense deduction. Just thinking about the Olympic trial, we've been talking about this along the road. The top six all around here will earn a spot there. Five athletes who are at the Pan American Championships, four on points. But it's, it's more about the impression tonight that you leave as well. The, those who are on the bubble, per se, that's all really important. But for the Sam McCooliks out here, Yo Moldauer, um, it's a national championship, and, and you expect to be a part of that at the Olympics. It's not a given, but Yul Moldauer, for example, right now, it's been a rough night so far for him. Well, it's been a rough night for a, a few of them, and you know that's, of course, you're, you're not making an Olympic team here, but the selection committee is certainly going to look back at these, these yeah. two days at the national championships, and not just this year. They are looking at consistency. Who can you put up at the Olympic Games in the team finals when three athletes go up on each event and all three scores have to count? You want someone that you know is going to deliver under no matter what kind of pressure or nerves or the situation that the Olympic Games will bring. Numbers for Mike Moran, 12.15 for the effort on rings. It's a good job for him. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not one of his absolute best events, but he's competing for his, his fellow Gophers. Going to keep it here on still rings. And Yul Moldauer now starts to try to turn it around in ninth after the second rotation. And he should be able to do that. Once again, it's all about the strength skills to get the big score. Two second hold. Very nicely done. Another Maltese done from a skill called a home nut or a whip it. You see him open his fingers and his wrists. He does that to show that his the bottom part of his wrist is not on the rings. That that's called and that was excellent. You know, and it's that skill right there. So hard to do nowadays because a lot of gymnasts they get to the position and they're already too high and they can be brutal on that. I think he did it well. This looks like an improved routine. My opinion for Yule. There we go. And he can do that all day long. 
all day long. Beautiful in the air, great positions. I thought that was excellent. Said he never considered stopping when the Tokyo Games were postponed for a year. He said, my goal is not just one Olympics, it's to go to three or four. I know. <laughs> nice position, very flat right there. Definitely holds it for two seconds. A little bit of degrading there. Falls out of it a little bit. Now watch his hands. He opens them up. His wrists are not on the rings. If they're on the rings, that's an additional deduction. Should be a solid number for Moldauer. As we wait for that, we go over to the high bar and Sam McCulloch, high bar bronze medal. Finally got that individual medal at the World Championships 2018 that eluded him so many times. And the first thing we'll check is physically, yes. is he okay here? Well, this is probably his biggest challenge. He is phenomenal on high bar. For so many years he faltered on this event, got that bronze medal though finally in 2008 thing. 18, but his routine is just stacked with difficulty. A lot of big releases. First one right here. Do another one. This one in tucked position. Double backs over the bar with a full twist. Now he'll change it up. Gorgeous. Sometimes he... Really nice. Really nice work right here says he has to be careful on those major releases because they're very tricky on his elbow. Remember he has that floating bone chip in there. Rough start for Sam, not on pipe. Excellent job for McCulloch on high bar. You know, coming into these national championships, he definitely has had a, a different mental approach than you know we have ever really even seen or, or heard from him. And he said that he just doesn't expect himself to be better than ever. He actually just wants to enjoy competing, be grateful, and, and really try to figure out and, and remind himself that he is more than just a gymnast. Yeah, he's been really upfront talking about that, that his entire self-image has been based on what he does in competition. And of course, as a high-level athlete, most can relate to that, but now trying to think of it in a different way and get everything out of the experience of being here at his last national championships. Saw that big release skill. It's called the Casina, named after Olympic champion from Italy. Double twisting, double laid out. Great form and just look at just the smallest of steps. There we go. That's the smiling Sam that we're used to seeing. <laughs> Has not lost an all-around at the U.S. Championship since 2012, almost a decade. <laughs> and he was here competing here. at this Great event in 2017 here. when Moldauer won the title, but he only competed in two of the six ah. events. For Yule, 14.5. And that is a very big number for Yule. You see the green arrow, that means excellent. And an excellent. For Sam. Keep it simple. Keep it in green. Yes, sir, absolutely. He actually is capable. You see that difficulty score, 6.1. He's capable of doing sometimes even a 6.5 difficulty. He just did a laid out to Kachev instead of a what, Nastia? I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> instead of a Lukin, which is a laid out to Kachev with a full twist. And no, Nastia, you not didn't do that. That was your me. dad, Valeri. <laughs> Gosh, Modi, the parallel bars champ back in 2017. But you think about that, that lack of competition, too, for these guys. 2020 Winter Cup, early season, last competition. Prior to that, the 2019 World Championships. And you got to get back in competition mode in a hurry. You know, I feel a little bit bad, a little remiss that uh, at the top of the show, I kind of named some of the top guys, and I didn't mention Akash Modi. He is absolutely, without a doubt, in the hunt to be on that Olympic team. Got a big routine here. Little bit of bent arms, not allowed to do that on parallel bars. Big release right here. That's actually called a bofsar. 
named after great American gymnast Raj Bafsar, who is a distant cousin of Akash's. And as you mentioned earlier on the high bar too, with, with the Luke and the way that you can get a skill named after you have to perform it successfully at a World Championships or an Olympic Games or a World Cup. Wow. Oh, and that was sweet right there. So, so unusual. Full twisting double somersault. Maybe didn't look that hard to some of you folks at home, but it is stellar. So we'll see another vault named after Simone once we go Absolutely. to the Olympics, as a matter of fact. Akash Modi, get that number and check in again with Sam McCulloch, the six-time all-around champ. Back with a score, parallel bars for Akash Modi. You expect 13-8? Yeah, you know, I mean, he says it himself. Sometimes he gets a little rushed and he gets squirrely with his form. And that's an example of every skill he did. He loses a tenth, sometimes two. He also did not make a handstand and bent his arms on it. So that score does not surprise me. All right, Steven Nedorazic, you really have to feel for a pommel horse specialist, silver medalist in 2019, was on the path to earning an individual spot. The Apparatus World Cup, he had won one. He was in Azerbaijan. When the pandemic actually hit, they were worried about the border closing in the U.S. They woke him up early for qualifying that day. He had to skip qualifying, come back to the U.S., and they counted the qualifying. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely brutal. And, you know, I really don't think they should have done that. Personally, he's he's a phenom on this event. Just gorgeous work, so difficult. But there is a chance for him to go to the Olympic Games tomorrow at the Pan American Games. Those four U.S. athletes, if they place in the top two in the all around, the U.S. will earn an extra spot and they will choose a specialist in that spot, and he is someone that could fit the bill. And that routine right there, that don't hurt. <laughs> There's so much that goes into choosing a team and, and the details like that. Uh, so much, and especially a little bit different on both the men and the women's side, but not that this adds to this incredible score, but when we got a chance to talk to him after all of that and everything that happened, I don't think I've ever talked to somebody just so positive yeah. and yeah. the outlook that he had it just really <laughs> wanted to make you root for him almost like you, you want to shake him and say don't you understand how unlucky you were yes. i know i i said i so was optimistic. enraged yeah. i was enraged and he's like it's okay tim <laughs> he, i think he said it was an honor that you were <laughs> oh, shoot, Randy. so that effort a short time ago and brody right malone there. in first place after two rotations here at the national right championships also take you back to this effort here on parallel bars Beautiful mount, little bit of elbow bend. Just a tenth off on that. Very difficult. Skill called a Makuts. Very risky. That could have been better. Didn't really get to a perfect handstand position. Brody has been just absolutely on fire with his gymnastics. Full spin on one arm is called a Healy turn. Very difficult to pull it off that well. Great handstand positions. Nice double pike, slight little hop on the landing. And he's gonna come in with a lower maximum starting score. You see that 5-8 relative to Akash, but he's gonna get a better score because he doesn't have all of those deductions. Yeah, the execution 8.6, so the total 14.4, and couldn't really dream of a better, much better start. No. Through three rotations for Brody Malone. Back with a start of rotation number four here at the U.S. Championships. Night one of two, four nights overall for us, bringing them to you. The women getting underway tomorrow night. So Malone leads it after the third rotation. Sam McCulloch, a big jump with that last effort. 
and we, we kind of eavesdropped on him during the commercial break, and he said, I needed that one fall to get the jitters out. You know, and sometimes that's that's all it takes, especially not being out here on the competition floor as we've been talking about. It's so difficult to replicate the, the feelings and the nerves and the pressure that you feel when you are out here on the podium, especially Olympic year. Ellen Bauer just about ready on still rings now. And so this is a huge challenge for Allen. As I said, he has that shoulder issue, the labrum in it. I think it might be torn. They don't know. But all of the strength parts are just brutal on that grinding in there. And also the swing elements that we'll see in a little bit. Pretty good so far. You see that face. That, now watch these things. These are called Yamawakis, double flips while holding on to the rings. Right here. And it's just, it just rhymes on that. I'll tell you what though, if you want somebody to have your back in the foxhole, you don't, they don't get any better than Alan Bauer. He's in tremendous pain doing this, but a great routine for him on Still Rings. A little bit. Nasty, I don't know how you do that. I, I've got a bad shoulder. It's hard to hold the microphone. <laughs> well, look at, let alone look do at that. Him, look at him holding it, you know? I mean, it's just, it is, it is brutal. He, you know, he thinks he can run through the two competitions at nationals and he'll have a little time to let it get a little better but so there's all this rotation going on in the shoulder he inlocates and he's flipping around and it, it just frankly it, it, it kills <laughs> but it, it looks like it kills anyway it, it, <laughs> I mean, it, it does it does and i think that's the thing it's you know not that anybody wants to go through anything in, in that much physical pain but when it is an olympic year you have to kind of decide when it, you're up against the clock, right? You probably, yeah. if, if you do have to get an operation, you probably don't necessarily have the time to recover and then go to the Olympic trials and, and you know, hope your dreams of, of making that Olympic team come true. And it's it's trying to decide yourself, really. Over the floor, Sam McCulloch, you saw that concentration. You still do right now, that mental aspect that he has changed in competition. It's a potentially very big routine for him. Big hop back, that's a three-tenths of a point hop. This is so difficult right here. Oh, jeez. Mm. And it's really remarkable he was able to stay on his feet. I would have sat down, <laughs> no question. Little bit of a squat on the landing. You know, he had that big move from seventh to second, but only gained or close the gap on Brody by 0.35. Oh boy, and another very shaky landing. In 2016, at the Olympic Games, he won the qualifying. And some of the top guys, they faltered. And it was his shot, triple twist, big step on the landing, a lot of moving around on the floor. He, as we said with Akash Modi, he just is kind of going to get tenth to death. Every single tumbling pass had not just a step, but they were three tenth steps. But it was that floor routine that still haunts him in many ways. He references that. A bit thinking back to that and, and now trying to change that mental aspect. Well, absolutely, and he said, you know, he, he panicked and he started freaking out, and so it's every single competition that you are out here under these bright lights, you try to treat that, this competition like your Olympic Games, and here's that extremely difficult pass that. Look at how low he gets. He almost sits down and, you know, if they evaluate that correctly, that's, that's a huge deduction because he gets that big hop backwards, but he also, when he squats down like that, those are brutal deductions. 
Bauer number for Ellen Bauer on rings, 13.6. Just begins to tell the story of how painful that must have been, the suffering. All right, over to Alec Yoder, and he's awfully good. Excels at this. 2018 U.S. Pommel Horse champ, also won the NCAA title in 2019. Yeah, he, he's a standout here, and he is another athlete that is hopeful that on Friday, the U.S. earns a second quota spot. And his hat will be securely in the ring to be considered for a pommel horse specialist. Very difficult skills done on one pommel, full spins on them. Gorgeous work, very extended body. See, his hips are completely open. That's what the judges are looking for. Looking for a good rhythm also. And that's okay that the rhythm changed there because he's actually turning the opposite way that he is circling, called a Magyar. Really good, really, really good routine for Alec Yoder. And pumped about it, <laughs> the fuck guy. <laughs> and you know, sometimes I think people watch and they and they think, okay, if this is your specialty and this is possibly your one event to be able to get onto the Olympic team, it is not as much pressure. But let me tell you, it's actually even more pressure because that means every single time you touch this apparatus, you have to hit. You're not going to be put on an Olympic team for being a specialist if you cannot deliver basically with your eyes closed. Well, you don't have the luxury of what we've seen Sam McCulloch do, come back in another event and make up for your mistake. This Absolutely. is what it comes down to for him. Sam McCulloch, speaking of, there's the number for his floor exercise and the problems that he had. Yeah, that is brutal number for Sam McCulloch. That can be almost close to two points higher if he's on his game. You're good. All right, there is the man in the lead right, after three now. rotations, Brody. Malone, not entirely unexpected for him to do well here, but he's excelled and uh, maybe exceeded expectations. This was the effort a short time ago on high bar. And like Sam McCulloch, he is spectacular, potentially on high bar. Huge release. Gorgeous. He'll do another one. This was a little bit ago, but wow. Giant air on this, and the combination earns him additional points. And a great fight right there. Just a little bit of bent elbows. A little shy on the handstand there, but so far, Brody Malone has looked completely in his element. Big dismount, double-double, bam! He's pretty much Stuck. come here to own the national championships. Wow. That is a very big routine right there. 14, 4, 5, 0, oh, and the green arrow. So a man who we thought would be good has been great. Alec Yoder, how about that number? Second highest today, tenth of a point behind. Nederazek, who is also a specialist on pommel horse. Good battle going on there for that. But it's Malone who has led the way and has been sensational. Back inside Dickey's Arena and Eddie Pinev, the 2017 U.S. floor champ. That's where he goes right now. Veteran 30 years old says this will definitely well, I'll back up. He says almost certainly be his last season. Yeah, he, he you want to hedge a little bit yeah, just little in bit. case, right? There's actually a world championships in 2021 also, which is a couple months, a few months after Tokyo. And I asked him, so that's off the table? And he goes, no, <laughs> yeah, I see, might do that. Too. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult. Triple twisting, double somersault. We'll see Simone Biles do that tomorrow night. Not only
only does he have extremely difficult skills, as we just saw in those, those first two opening telling passes, but his form. But that. All those, all those twisting elements, his feet are typically glued together, knees are straight. Beautiful. Should have stuck that one. That's an easy pass for him. Oh, that looks good. He thinks so. Yeah. I mean, it's an excellent routine. I have to tell you, though, I'm, I'm looking at that dismount. The way he took off for the triple twist, it looked perfect to me, and I thought he was going to be in a perfect position. He landed, and it was a perfect position, but he still hopped. That's a good routine, though. They like it too. Avid climbers spent a lot of the pandemic climbing 14,000 foot mountains, like Tim did <laughs> in his spare time. I think a high five from anybody around there. <laughs> and here's that opening tumbling pass. Three flips, three twists on the woman's side, of course. Sorry, two flips, three twists, of course, called the Biles. We'll see that. Not on the men's night. side, though. <laughs> right, on the woman's side. So here's that dismount, triple twist, and the takeoff position I thought was perfect. Going to be set up for this really, really well. And look at the body position. It's great, but just doesn't, he's not quite patient enough on his landing. He's so fast, quick twitch. <laughs> he, he reacts a little too quickly instead of kind of absorbing. Don't ruin his moment. <laughs> he's really excited about that. Oh, God, he is, he is phenomenal. He's world class on both floor exercise and vault. Hey guys, it's been a really good night so far. Third after three rotations for Cole Walker. And with a name like that, he's gotta be an athlete from Texas. <laughs> Austin, Texas. He was born Cedar Park is his hometown and star at Stanford. Headed. Not just Cole, but the entire Stanford team is just dominating tonight. They have four of the top five athletes in the all-around. After the last rotation, only Sam McCulloch keeps the complete royal flush from occurring. Great landing. It's, it's a very good routine, not the most difficult exercise that we've seen. Brody's routine, for example, or Sam certainly much more difficult, but he did it cleanly and he stuck the landing. Junior champ, all around champ at the U.S. National Championships 2019, the last time they were held. That was in Kansas City. Seems like a lifetime ago. It does. We'll see if the solid night continues numbers wise for Colt Walker in a moment, the 19 year old. And Eddie Penev, there's the number, 14.75. Yeah! Really good, yep. really good. And 8.75, and he had, I don't know, what do you think, Nastia? Three, four places where, you know, he can increase it by a tenth or three because of hops? Absolutely, a little bit more patience, a little more confidence again, just getting back out here on the competition floor. The nerves are probably a little bit higher after a year off of not competing. All right, remember, sixth place after three rotations for one of the stars here, Yul Moldauer, who's won a U.S. all-around title and then the silver medalist as well. This is Vault a few moments ago. Same ball we've seen a bunch of times. Well done, but I believe he is out of bounds on that. Good, but not great for him. And they agree with you, 14.2. So that execution, even nine, but 5.2 on the difficulty as well. How about the number for Cole Walker and that effort we just saw in high bar? 13.35, my drop a bit after being third after three rotations. As we continue from Fort Worth in a moment.
excellent night continues for Brody Malone. There you see the lead, almost two points now. He has led throughout through four rotations for the 21-year-old from Somerville, Georgia. Time now for a Believe You Will performance presented by Guaranteed Rate. And what got this party started for Brody was vault and a little bit of gymnastics 101 right there. Fly high and stick the landing. He is on fire. Our Believe You Will performance presented by Guaranteed Rate and courtesy of Brody Malone, who leads the way. Sam McCulloch with that drop in the standings down to fifth now. Yo Moldauer in second behind Malone. Back in a moment. Reminder tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern, NBCSN. We'll see this. Yeah, Simone, the U.S. Class X. <laughs> Yeah, she'll be here, obviously, looking for title number seven in the all-around, but also some other big names. Laura Hernandez, part of that Olympic gold in 2016, Silver on Beam, and Chelsea Memo, 32 years of age, mother of two, nine years away from the sport, and back in action with the family watching her dad out there coaching, so all of that coming your way tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, as we continue here in Fort Worth. And we send it over to Andrea. Hey, Terry, you talked about it a little bit earlier about how the pandemic has really forced a lot of gymnasts into some interesting situations. For Akash Modi, it meant going back to his roots. When the Stanford gym closed, he called up his old coaches and headed home to New Jersey. He was training at Meadowlands Gymnastics, where the athletes there ranged in age from 9 yeah. to 18. Now, all of those guys, they thought that he was the big man on campus, but Akash mentally told me that he really felt like he was a kid again, like he went back to his junior days. Physically, Akash literally took a giant step back, relearning fundamentals and basics, and he says that that approach this year has given him more confidence in his bigger skills and, in general, Terry, his whole outlook on gymnastics is just a whole lot fresher. And, guys, it's never a bad thing. You go back to the basics and maybe you teach a little bit. It's a reminder of things. Yeah, it's amazing. When you do teach, you... It, it, it sticks out so well in your head, you can actually improve quite a lot. All right, on we go here. Night number one of the U.S. National Championships. First time ever here in a brand new building in Fort Worth. Sam McCulloch in fifth after the fourth rotation. So the problems we saw on floor cost him some. Yeah, they certainly did. And Sam, once again, world class on pommel horse as well. The elbow has really bothered him here, and it's bothered him so much that he has had to change his routine. He has a very tricky element that he has taken out. You know, we talk about that both on the women's and the men's side, but it's that risk and reward. And if something, especially with an injury, if something's truly not only bothering you and, and making it perhaps a little bit more injured if you're able to do something a little bit more consistent and, and be a little bit more confident with a perhaps an easier routine here at the national championships and then at trials and hopefully the olympics add that difficulty back you could tell there was a little disappointment in his voice describing that having to water it down because of the injury Flare circles. Good one pommel work so far. Has a great swing and a very extended circle, which is what the judges are absolutely looking for. Oh boy, getting a little crunchy there. Oh boy. And doesn't really get up to a handstand on that. He's going to incur a number of deductions for that dismount. You know, on, on multiple of the events, it almost seems as there's a little bit of a lack of endurance, especially towards the end of the routines, both, you know, right here on the pommel horse. We saw it on some of the other apparatus, and, and that's what happens when you are not able to train the numbers, when you have an injury and you, you have to work through that or take time off from that event, 
putting in the repetition is what is going to help get that endurance get up. This should fly up to a handstand. Let's see. He never gets there, as you see that. I don't know what they're going to do with that because uh, I don't really know if that's a dismount in the rule book. So. And if you don't have a dismount, that is a major deduction. You talk about requirement. fatigue. We kind of saw it to kick off the evening with your Moldauer on that as well. And you know, and a lot of these athletes have talked about not wanting to be at their peak and in their prime here at the national championships, wanting to do that later on at the Olympic trials. But at the same time, you have to at least leave a good enough impression to not only, you know, he obviously won't have an issue moving on to the Olympic trials, but they are going to look back, as we mentioned, at all of these routines this year and even others from last year. Well, if you don't shine at the Olympic trials, you don't want to have any doubt in their minds either. And Absolutely. be able to look at a performance and go, it oh, wasn't great in Fort Worth a few weeks ago, even 13. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's fallen off the horse many times in competitions and gotten higher scores than that. That was not a good one for him. All right, specialists here on rings coming up. Brandon Wynn, 32 years of age and a four-time national champ in this event. <laughs> he is just a little bit strong. It's like off the charts. I saved this for the very strongest in the world. He is alien strong <laughs> on still rings. But he's got to follow the rules. He's got to hold those strength parts. Two complete seconds. Beautiful right there. Yeah, that is perfect. I heard someone on the floor yelling. It was. Really, really tough stuff right there. That's called an inverted cross. Very few gymnasts are doing that nowadays. Just physically exhausting when you're having to hold all of these positions. His muscles have muscles. <laughs> Just gotta have the endurance as we've been talking all night long. Little bit of struggle in that handstand. Double twisting double. Oh, jeez. And he just completely ran out of gas right there. That's a shame because that was a pretty darn good routine. You know, can I just say, I'm glad you're able to watch this at home on TV. If you ever get an opportunity and haven't had it to come here watch in person, it, it is just amazing what these human beings do. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to do that. No, I mean, that's just, no. Just lay down on the floor in the living room. <laughs> lay down on the floor in your stomach and try to lift your body up with just your arms. It was great, spectacular strength, but just looked a little bit tired in that handstand before and just not enough rotation at all. Big step and he, he shows support on his hands. And when you show support, that's a full point off. You know, we talked about on an event like Pommel Horse, for instance, kind of trying to do more a petition to gain that endurance in a, in a routine like this, the routine that Brandon just did, it's tough to perform a lot of numbers. All right, Andrea was talking about him a moment ago, Akash Modi, here he is. a lot on getting his knees as close to straight as possible and he actually does look a little bit better sometimes when he gets nervous though he lets them get a little bit softer not as locked out and that's an area that you know I, I kind of joke around with Akash, his, his landings. That one was great, and he knows it. He, he says, I, I really have always struggled with that. Once again, it's that patience, believing that you're in the right position. 
It was a good routine. You think Akash takes it as a joke? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> at, at certain times, maybe, yeah. Excuse me, Bibi. his number in a moment. Meanwhile, Brandon Wynn, disappointing 13.5, really disappointing. Yeah, and that is, that is not a good number for him. And if he repeats that Saturday night, he... I don't, I don't know if he would progress on to the final Olympic trials. Another still rings athlete has already gone and scored you know, almost a 15 on rings, yep. Alex Diab. And of course, they're looking for all arounds, but also specialties, individual events. But yeah, if you, you struggled that much tonight. One more night to come for all of these men. And a couple of nights for the women here in Fort Worth. Ellen Bauer getting set. His teammates all here cheering him on. We've heard all the, the loud cheers the last couple of efforts on vault. We'll do that same vault we've seen all night long. The only one that I believe didn't do it was Eddie Penev. Did a different vault, but this is a kasamatsu with one and a half twists. So you're actually twisting two and a half times around in a double flip with a laid out position. <laughs> it's what Alan Bauer does all day long and nighttime too. You know what? It wasn't as loud a cheer from his Sooner teammates, or they expected it, I think. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he can do that all the time. And I'll tell you what, that vault is not easy for Alan Bauer. He has got to give everything he's got. 13.9. brought potatoes. You, let, you got rid of potatoes, and you brought them back, and everyone loved it. Mexican pizza, Akash too. always what? gives you that. Yeah, yeah I always. I think he's so. talking about Taco Bell, just hey. so you know. <laughs> How about Brandon Briones, what he's done so far tonight? In third, going into the fifth rotation, the 20-year-old, another one of those Stanford guys. He is an athlete, absolutely. Just got all these qualities. He's quick, physically strong. He's one of those guys that when I saw him as a kid, I remember thinking, it's just not possible that he's already this good. I, I, I really thought, wow, he just blew me away. Very nice press to a handstand there. It's a requirement to do a non-acrobatic element like that. You can fulfill it a bunch of different ways. Allowed to take his time there because he's still moving his arms. Really difficult dismount. Kind of takes the risk, but probably going to lose about four tenths off on that for form in the hop. So in third, going into that fifth rotation, a little more than two points back, the 2021 NCAA team champ and all-around bronze medalist, Brandon Briones. Back with the numbers for Brandon Briones. So 5.7 the difficulty, execution 8.5, 14.2. Yeah, solid number. And Bauer on vault, 14.35 the number. As his fifth rotation continues. And in second place going into this rotation, Yomal Bauer, and a moment ago, his effort on parallel bars. This is a great routine for Yule. And it needs to be because the next event is not his best high bar he struggles with. But look at the line. Everything is, isn't it so, it's nice to look at, right, Nasty? Well, absolutely, and on every single event, like we talked about when he started the competition, it's the landings, it's the execution, the lines, the toe point, every little detail. Oh, that was gorgeous right there. Very tricky element right there. A little bit of a pause in that handstand. He's supposed to keep moving, but it's so challenging, that element. 
There have been some great routines tonight on parallel bars. And this one was one of them. Double front, half turn. Oh, just a little hop on the landing, but really, really strong exercise. And getting 14.35. That's, that's interesting. I, that 8.05, I would have been, what do you think? At least five tenths higher, if, yeah. if not more. Yeah, I mean. I, that's, that was pretty brutal. I mean, Maybe enough, though, to take the lead. We'll see. All right, Gage Dyer, the 22-year-old from Oklahoma, another one of the Sooners out here. In fact, short time ago on vault, the 2021 NCAA vault champ. And this is four tenths harder than all the vaults we've seen so far. Triple twist. Boom. <laughs> Boom indeed. <laughs> yikes. Gets another yikes. Two yikes in one night. This is his second vault. New vault for Gage. Hansbury double front. You can't do that. Two times in a row. What word you got there? Blind landing, kerpow again. Kerpow. Is that like the old Batman thing? It's Is Batman. that where that's coming? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Better than kerplunk. <laughs> it's an Olympic year. We got. We got some. We need some new words from you. <laughs> Fourteen seven. That's the highest vault score. Ties with Brody. I think that could have been. I think that could have been a tenth or two higher. You think that should be higher too? Maybe. I, I do. All right, 14-7 will take that, though. First place going into this rotation. Brody Malone, what a night it has been for him. I mean, we talked about him throughout the day, and I know you've had your eye on him, and certainly gymnastics fans know the name, but really emerging here at the U.S. Championships this week, tonight. Oh, no question, no question. But uh, I've seen this coming for a while now. Um, he just, uh, he... You know, he's got all of the attributes that you need physically, but the the thing that is even more difficult than that is do you have the ability to remain in the zone, to keep focused and to not let things knock you off track? And that's where he is really good. Mindset-wise coming in, though, is there less pressure on a guy like Brody Malone than some of the other names early that we mentioned? I would have to say yes. I mean, I think coming in as a little bit more of an underdog as opposed to being expected to possibly come out on top. But he is one that really took advantage of that extra year, you know, coming yep. with the Olympics were to have been held last year. He has really just been able to take that year, upgrade, get the confidence, get, get everything that he truly needs in order to perform like he is right here tonight. Difficult opening tumbling run, and he steps out of bounds. That is new for him, that front full to a double pike, super hard. He is doing really tough gymnastics, but he is not landing as well as he can, that's for sure. Beautiful position right there. Oh, you gotta stick that one. <laughs> He's gonna hear about that from his teammates. Very simple for an athlete like him, a double full. Still having a, a phenomenal competition. Triple twist, step backwards, a very good routine. He's the man tonight, but he can be way better on that event. If he hears about it from his teammates, he's gonna point up to the leaderboard and go, hey, <laughs> what, what place you in? Absolutely. Because <laughs> he has been the man so far tonight. I'll tell you this first pass, that he did. It's new for him, like I said, it, and doing it in combination, this double pike at the end, so difficult, front layout full, and he has just rebound immediately. He over pulls just a little bit. Bounding step forward. And Nasty and Timmy is well chalked. <laughs> for that tumbling leg. pass. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you don't see that every day. 
I mean, a healthy amount going on there before that effort. Well, what he does, he 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 has to grab his legs on that double pike, and he does he puts that chalk there so it doesn't slip. Keep doing it. It's working at the highest level here tonight, nationally at least, the national championships, and he's been terrific throughout. Check the standings as we continue. So the lead was 1.9, it's 1.5 now, but what a night for Bodie Malone over Yul Moldauer, Rionis, and then Sam McCulloch down in seventh place. What do, you, what do you guys think, what you've seen so far? It's all Brody Malone, all night long. And you know, I think for for Sam, it's, it's not exactly the spot that he would like to be in. Of course, he said winning a seventh national title might not be important to him, but when you have six national titles, and it's an Olympic year, you certainly don't want to find yourself in that spot. So one rotation left for everybody. And Brody Malone will be over on Pommel Horse. Back to tell you, get ready for Girls 5 Eva, a hilarious new Peacock original from the creative minds behind Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Mr. Mayor. Stream every episode now exclusively on Peacock. Go to PeacockTV.com to get started. What's the name of it again? <laughs> what do you got? 5 Eva. Eva. <laughs> Beautiful look at Fort Worth and all the action taking place inside Dickey's Arena. Brand new arena 2019, and we head to the final rotation. Akash Modi. Just about ready to go. Brody Malone is on the evening, though. He is the leader going into the final rotation. So this is an event where he can really get a little bit sloppy with his legs. I told him the other day, though, after watching him, and this is excellent for him. Knees are very extended. I told him that, and he, well, he always smiles, but he had the, the biggest smile. So far, this is a very strong routine for Akash Modi, right up to the handstand. Mm. Big, big routine. Last one of the night for him. Good job. He smiled because he thought you were joking. You're normally joking <laughs> when you tell him. No, I've never seen, in the, in the last five years, I haven't seen Brody stay that tight with his legs on a horse. That was, that was excellent for him. Or, I said Brody. I, uh, Akash. Akash, yeah. Bring you over to rings now, and Shane Wiskus in sixth place after five rotations. So finishing up here. And you know, he hasn't had the best of days, you know? Right from the start, did that vault and big step to the side, and some of the places where he shines, he didn't shine quite as brightly. Does have the highest score of the night on parallel bars. 14.55. Very nice position on that cross. Definitely a solid two second hold. Good position there. A nice handstand position. Arms off the rings, not on the forearms at all. Double, double. And yeah, that looked like he was gonna be a little bit short on that rotation, didn't you think? Absolutely, and again, it goes kind of back to that endurance, and, and it's, it's a combination. It could be, you know, a little technical, but as we have seen a little bit across the board from a lot of these athletes, it's, it's, they're not quite at their peak. But here's that dismount. So it, it's a lot of things that has to go into this. Two flips and two twists and, and truly just trying to, first of all, spot the ground going for a stuck landing. But you see, he doesn't quite turn, get that second twist all the way around. And the judges are, you know, could be sitting right in front of him or from the side. And if he doesn't get it all the way around, it could be devalued, losing difficulty, the starting value. It could be. I, I don't think it will this time but it could be, absolutely. 
We'll see in a moment. Meanwhile, Akash Modi, the number for Puma horse, 13.45. That, that, yeah, you like it. Yeah, that was, that was 7.65, so nearly two and a half points in deductions. That was, that was too much. All right, high bar and Ewell Moldauer, who is in second place going into this final rotation, 1.5 points out of the lead. And as I said, he just really needs to survive on this event. He's kind of had some problems. He's been bouncing back and forth between, you know, his strategy on the elements that he's trying to do. He competed earlier this year at the Winter Cup, and he actually came off high bar. It was a very low scoring event for him. I said, what's the plan this time, Yule? He says, I'm just going clean. I want to be clean. It's always that decision to be made, right? Of course, and, and that is, that's really a big part of the process of trying to fit into that puzzle piece of making the Olympic team. Is it the difficulty, or do you want to be able to go out there and be clean and be consistent and be reliable? Just like an FYI, though, the routine he's going to show here at the Olympic Games is not hard enough. It's not going to keep Team USA in the hunt for a medal. So this is an event that if he makes the team, most likely in the team finals in three up, three count, he's not gonna do this event. Michael Moran went earlier and the judges right now still discussing the score. But still wants to do clean, Tim, to your point. Wants to do clean enough to, you know, make that Olympic team first and foremost, and not that oh, he yeah. will have, <laughs> you know, if he keep, continues going on this path, not that he'll have too much difficulty doing that, but. Absolutely. Being consistent across the board, two days of competition here, two days at the Olympic trials. And this might be the, the most nerve-wracking part, just wait. waiting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> waiting for the judges to be ready to go. Just announced, here we go. Yeah, I hated it, didn't you? Yes, absolutely. What was your longest wait, do you remember? Like what? Can't remember, yeah. never. It all, it all felt <laughs> like time was like, very slow. <laughs> And that was excellent for Yule. Right to a handstand. Another release right here. Very good, but not the most difficulty, as I mentioned. One more handstand element right here, and that one. That was not good. That's like five tenths of a point off because of his angle. Most of course land in a handstand. Great dismount right there. But as you said, land every single element on top of the of the bar in a handstand, and it was extremely past that. I think he was just his giant. The swings before it, he, he was he was going too quickly. Almost too much momentum yes, going exactly. into that spell. So hard. You know, he really should have slowed that giant down, I think. How difficult is it to make that adjustment then? Yeah. Once that starts. Well, no, it's hard. It's hard, but, you know, he could have even, you know, he, he's just, he's such a quick person, so. But I would advise him to try to slow down a little there. Over to Alan Bauer now in a share of fourth with Akash Modi going into this Final rotation, parallel bar. Not quite to a Hansen, really had to fight on that. Good. He did not want to do that, but this, if he keeps it clean, and he didn't, would not cost him anything. Nice release skill there. That was great. Wow, I thought he 
but he's gonna have to take a step with his hands. Double pike. Good routine, but certainly not great for Allen. Number for Whisk is an even 14. An execution of 8.5. That's a good number for him, though. It's not one of his standout events. His standouts are floor, vaulting, parallel bars, and high bar. All right, over to the leader overall going into this final rotation, Brody Malone, Pommel Horse. You know, I've said it. He, he has all the qualities that you need to be a great gymnast, but his body type makes Pommel Horse extremely difficult. He's bulky, and you have to put your hands behind your back a lot of times on a horse. But I'll tell you what, he does a great job dealing with that. Very similar body type to the best gymnast in the world currently, Nikita Nagorny from Russia. And Nikita finds a way to get, get it done. And for Brody, this was spectacular. Wow. What an evening it's been here in oh. Fort Worth for this 21-year-old. Man. Like I said, he's not built for pommel horse, but he makes it, he makes it happen by sheer effort and hard work. Welcome to the top, Brody. Coming in as one to make a move, and he certainly has tonight. Yul Moldauer, the number 12.8, and remember, he was in second place going into this rotation. Add five tenths for that one element. It would be a much better score. And Alan Bauer for his effort on parallel bars, also in red, 13.1. Problems he had there, so 7.5 on execution for him. Remember, he was in a share of fourth after the fifth rotation. So we'll see what the number will be for Brody Malone. It'll be, well, 14.15. And that is a very good number for Brody Malone and for a kid that isn't built for Pommel Horse. So it's a 2.65 lead. The numbers for Malone, it extends. And Moldauer down in third as we wait for the final effort from Sam McCulloch, the six-time all-around champ. The 2021 U.S. Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by ProForm. Visit ProForm.com and train like a pro by Angie, formerly Angie's List, your home for everything home. And by Tenna, time to skin protects like Tenna. Night falls here in the Metroplex area. Brody Malone, absolutely sensational here at the national championships tonight. Yeah, he was phenomenal on all six events. The only place he can be better, and he can be quite a bit better, is floor exercise. But what a major coming out party, and it's the right time to do it. You it's know, an it, Olympic year. I asked you earlier whether or not maybe the pressure is a little less on him than a Sam McCulloch. Who knows, because pressure is self-inflicted. But from this point forward, there'll be pressure. Yeah, absolutely. When you find yourself on top of any kind of competition like a national championships or an Olympic trials in, especially in an Olympic year, it's hard to forget about this one. Yeah, I, I really think that he has as much pressure as, as anybody else because he, he knows his abilities and he, he knows that he's got, you know, massive start scores you know his maximum scores on events are super high and he knew he could contend to win this title yeah no one knows inside what what pressure you're facing or what but you're not dealing with the interview requests that sam mccullick is and and all the different posts on social media and the expectations of winning a seventh all-around title correct as i was saying kind of going in as the underdog sometimes yeah Takes the pressure off a little bit, Maybe at the least. the perfect spot, knowing that you can get it done this time around. So, on rings, there is the six-time all-around champ. And in seventh, 
place going into the final rotation on night one. And personally, I just want to see him get through this routine right here. I've been saying it all night long. You know, he's got that elbow. You see him, you know, keeping that thing loose. The strength parts, he says, are very challenging. Just puts, you know, an incredible amount of pressure there. And if that chip is floating around in the wrong spot and you're trying to hold one of these strength parts, you know, it can, it can cause problems. Yeah, you came in talking about the expectations really being tempered on this event and pommel horse and maybe being a little better on vault and on floor after a year to do things and work on it. Who knows, when you get to be 28 years of age in this sport, been to the Olympics twice, it is hard to keep it at a high level. He has, he has done a lot in the sport of gymnastics. It's, uh, it's remarkable that he's been able to stay, you know, in such amazing form for so, so long. He hasn't showed it on the international stage, but in my opinion, Sam McCulloch is one of the best gymnasts in the world, without a doubt. Good. Start for him. Always been very strong in this position. It's called a plange. And this is an example of, of something that he's kind of watered down. Made it a little easier for him. He is exhausted right now, absolutely exhausted. And you just, I'm hoping that he holds on through the bottom here. Wow, and that was, that was a super fight from Sam McCulloch because he was really tired. And a couple times this year, he has, on his dismount, he has just pinged off the rings. And it's scary as all get up. I, I sensed a little fear in your voice yeah. there. He's posted both of them, and it was like the second time he was like, what the heck? A great fight from a great champion. It's the first time I've done that routine. But this man has been the man tonight on his opening night of the U.S. Championships. Brody Malone. Right from the start, too, guys. I mean, start to finish. There's a guy that took advantage of that extra year and is so much better. Hey, how about the effort tonight, too, from Brandon Bionis? Third place after the fifth rotation. Obviously, we're closing things out here, but earlier, take a look at the effort on Pommel Horse to close it out for him. And he was spectacular all night long. Nice swing right up to the handstand. Did that very well. Another one. Maybe that was a little shy of the handstand, but. I don't know about you, Tim, but sometimes ending on the pommel horse. Oh. Can be a little nerve-wracking starting the competition, ending the competition. It's, it's a little bit like the balance beam on the woman's yeah. side. Yeah. Nerves are a little bit higher, and but he dealt with them, and he didn't do just there. He did it all night long. Yeah, he has 13.35 that final rotation. The effort on pommel horse, but the 20-year-old and team champ, NCAA team champ with Stanford. Good night here, the opening night. 13.6. What do you think is going through his mind? Well, I'm sure he's disappointed. There's no question about that. But, you know, he, it is a process for him. You know, the thing he's got going for him, these U.S. championships are not the official part of their Olympic trials. He'll definitely qualify on to go to the trials. And from there, 
if he gets back to where he was, he, he'll be fine. It factors in, no doubt, but it is not officially a You're part right. of selecting the team. And those four team members, maybe a fifth. We'll see what happens with the Pan American Championships. But uh, McCulloch down in seventh. Brody Malone atop the standings, though, with Andrea Joyce. Brody, congratulations on Thank a you. spectacular night. Your first senior nationals. You led wire to wire. How does this impressive night compare to your expectations you had coming in for today? Um, I really didn't have any expectations coming in for today. My main goal was to just come in and focus and uh, hit six routines. Um, and I think, you know, it, it went pretty well. So, <laughs> <laughs> pretty well, yeah, I guess so. So. You talk a little bit about that focus. Tim Daggett was marveling about it earlier, how you were able to maintain your focus and stay in the zone from the first rotation right through the sixth. What was the key for you? Uh, just kind of staying in my bubble. Um, I normally don't like to watch other guys as much, but uh, this meet I wanted to kind of relax and uh, see how it went um, and uh, watch some of the other guys. Uh, they did great. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> So I think it's safe to say that we don't often talk to gymnasts who have rodeo backgrounds, oh gosh. right? <laughs> what, what do you take from that world that helps you in gymnastics? Is there anything that brings them together? Uh, definitely the competitiveness. Um, and rodeos, there's a lot of focus. Um, and like you're focused on, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> kind of nervous <laughs> it's it's okay it's okay but just know for the future you're probably going to get asked that question a lot about yeah. the rodeo stuff right congratulations figured, yeah. thank you okay best of luck down the way thank you appreciate it hey, you, you try to stay alive in rodeo is what you do i love it though you know yeah i, I did all right the other guys were great <laughs> it, was, it was good i'm rooting for him yeah okay. absolutely. Not after that yes absolutely and, and after the great performance obviously it was terrific i mean really really good the opening night rodeo malone so there's your name top of the standings here as we look ahead Tonight, two for the men, but uh, action packed throughout the week, the four days and nights here in Fort Worth. And a reminder, you can join us tomorrow night. And also for the men, uh, night two, that's Saturday, 8 Eastern. Tomorrow it's the women and Simone Biles, of course, five-time Olympic medalist, beginner request for a seventh U.S. championship. And that comes your way at 8 o'clock Eastern on NBCSN. Until then, for Nastia, Tim, and Andrea, I'm Terry Gannon. So long for now from Fort Worth, Texas.